trouble coming, dear. Mm, well, fine, fine, Mom. Page one, you were on page five yesterday. Well, I, I made a mistake. I, I started over. I killed a hero. Oh, Michael, you didn't. How could you possibly kill the hero? Well, at the time, I hadn't planned on him being the hero, but, but he became such a lovable character that after he was dead, I, I missed him. <laughs> you writers do have problems. <laughs> Now, can I watch television now? Michael's working. What's he doing with my pipe? Well, all writers smoke pipes. I don't get it. So now he's got to be a writer. How long's this going to last? Now, Joe, we must encourage Michael. He has a week's vacation. He's going to write a book. You should feel proud. You mean I can't watch television for a week? I'll through for tonight. You can turn on the television as soon as he finishes this page. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, hi, Pop. Now, don't pop me. Haven't you anything better to do with your time? What's better than becoming a famous author? <laughs> See this book, Forbidden Journey, by Jacques de Varenne? I read in the paper today where he sold this to the movies for $50,000. Yeah? How much are the movies going to give you for this? Joe, you'll sing a different tune when Michael's novel is finished. Now, look, if Michael's going to get $50,000 for what he writes, I'm the last one to stand in the way. Son, why don't you tell us what your novel's about? Your father and I'd like to hear the plot, wouldn't we, dear? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I, I just have the germ of an idea. Uh, it hasn't quite crystallized yet. But I... I see the setting in the steaming jungle. The Amazon, world's largest river. Where man has yet to win a foothold against the forces of nature. Beneath the underbrush squirm, boa constrictors and armadillos. Sloths dangle from trees and red-eyed vampire bats fill the night. The jungle stillness is suddenly shattered by the blood-curdling cry of the macaw. <laughs> Rodney trudged forward through the clinging vines that kept grabbing at his body. He had been wandering through the uncharted wastelands for three days now without food or water. The sun beat down upon his pain-wracked body. Hotter. Hotter. The heat grew more intense. He could hardly breathe. Would the jungle show him no mercy? Rodney Penwhistle knew that he was slowly losing his mind. His legs crumbled and he fell to the ground of the slimy jungle. He lit his pipe and waited for death. And it was not far away. The floor of the jungle was alive. A throbbing, living carpet of red ants, devouring and eating, <laughs> stripping the jungle of everything that was in sight. Rodney forced himself to his feet and vowed to die like a true pen whistle. He thought of throwing himself into the Amazon, but there he knew the deadly perennia was awaiting him. The deadly fish that can strip a man's body to a skeleton in a matter of seconds. No, this was not for Rodney. He backed himself against the nearest tree and awaited death defiantly. But above him, unaware, in a branch slowly, silently, slithering down towards him was a bow constrictor. <laughs> oh, I know I thought. Okay, Michael, go on with your story. Well, th that's as far as I read. I thought that was your story. You read it? Sure, that's, that's the story I was telling you about, Forbidden Journey. Well, they're going to make a movie out of that book. Nobody will pay any attention to that kind of stuff. Well, I'm going to have Mr. DeVeren autograph the book for me tomorrow. Well, you can sure give him an acting lesson. I'm going to turn on television. Look out for the ball constrictor! <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Shock, I tell you, this is no publicity stunt. The situation is serious. Ça ne fait rien, Harry. Ça ne fait rien. That's just what I've been trying to tell you. What did you say? One cannot be certain of anything, Harry. Maybe my life is in danger, and maybe it is not. C'est la vie. Why are you so stubborn? Ever since you started this speaking tour, we've had reports the Amboto have been shadowing you. Harry, Des Moines, Pittsburgh, Omaha, Chicago. Harry, shall we be factual? Yes. 
Yes, the Embato is practically an extinct tribe who inhabits the headwaters of the Amazon. Is bar, but no Embato has ever been out of Peru. It says so in my book. But before you came along, nobody ever broke into their forbidden city. There's a curse that goes with that, right? Patatou, oui, patatou, no. Ça ne fait rien, Harry. What about that native girl you married and ran out on, that Samal dame? I did not run out on Samal. That was misunderstanding, n'est-ce pas? How was I to know when I took the patawa food from her hand and drank of the juice that this was a marriage ceremony? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. When in Rome, lay off the patawa fruit. We will have no more silly talk about Imbato in America, eh? Right now, I am more concerned with the California drivers. Yes? That is my schedule for today. Entree! Watch it. You don't let just anybody walk in. For Monsieur de Varenne. Oh, thank you. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Greetings from a friend. Hey, that's nice fruit. Really cost something. Nice. Sacré bleu. C'est impossible. What's wrong? Regardez. Is there a worm in it? What the fuck? The empato. They are here. Is it? Mickey Mulligan, sir. Is that an name? What do you want out there? I'm an admirer of Mr. DeVaren. I wondered if he would mind autographing a book for me, please. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Monsieur DeVaren. I'm Mickey Mulligan. I'm also an author. <laughs> That's DeVaren. Oh. Bonjour. Bonjour, Monsieur Mulligan. Say, si bon, I'm sure. Uh, you know, after I write my first novel, I'm going to live just like this. <laughs> uh, your face, it looks familiar. Have I not seen you someplace before? You look familiar to me, too. Do I know you? <laughs> Perhaps we met at, uh, at Capri? Uh, Deauville. Ah, no. Can't. No, perhaps it was the, uh, Pomona Fair. <laughs> Muscle Beach, maybe. <laughs> Were you on the glass bottom boat in Catalina last year? Glass bottom boat? A uh, bottom boat? Jacques, could I talk to you a minute? Pardon, monsieur. But I am not sure. Here, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> now, what do you think? It's formidable. <laughs> he looks like my twin brother. Do you get the picture, Mulligan? Can't see much of anything with these on. <laughs> Monsieur Mulligan, you said a moment ago that you would uh, like to perhaps someday live in this manner, yes? Oui, oui. <laughs> How would you like to be the author of Forbidden Journey? Oh, I'd like it very much, but gosh, I could never be that lucky. Perhaps you can. How would you like to trade places with me and be Jacques Barin? Me be, be you? Well, that, that's impossible. We, we don't even look alike. No. no I, I, I'm short and you're short. My hair is reddish brown and yours is... My nose is yours. Gee. Shall we say a hundred bucks a week plus expenses? All you have to do is take Jacques' place at interviews and autograph parties and stuff like that. But, 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 but... You wanted to be a writer. You're a writer. Uh, perhaps, Harry, we should, uh, we should not rush, Monsieur Mulligan. We should tell him why we want him to take my place, yes? You see, Monsieur, I have, how you say over here, many friends. 
And they, uh, they pester me. Yes, yes. Old friends will do it every time. But uh, we do not wish to wash you, monsieur. We do not wish to wish you say you Americans uh, twist your leg. Well, uh, that's all right. Uh, I, I do want the job. I could learn an awful lot about riding from you, monsieur. Say no more. Set a ton du. Set uh, on ton du. <laughs> ah. Well, that settles it. I'll take you down to get you fitted for mustache, goatee, and glasses. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I, I flunked French in high school. You did? But then that might not mean anything. I flunked English, too. <laughs> Brace yourself, Jacques. We're ready for the unveiling. Ah, this is good. I have just finished the speech. He is to make it the book and author club. Presenting the famous author, Monsieur Jacques de Varenne. Voila! <laughs> well, uh... How do I look? Now there are two Jacques de Varennes. Hey, Harry? Now, Mulligan, you go take a stroll around town, sort of a test flight, and if anybody stops you for an autograph, sign Jacques de Varenne. Jacques de Varenne. Ren. 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 Bon voyage. <laughs> Well, what do you think? The resemblance is fantastic. I wonder if it'll fool the Ambotos. Pardon, <coughs> mademoiselle. I'll be with you in a minute, Mickey. Oh, I am Jacques de Varennes, a famous French author. Mickey Mulligan, what on earth are you up to? Oh, I, I do not understand. I've only been in this country for a few days. Who is this uh, Mickey Mulligan? Someone I know with a very bad French accent. <laughs> oh, you American women, you make us a joke. You have such savoir, so uh, joie de vivre. Cheek, cheek, I kiss your hand, mademoiselle. Mm. Why, oh. Monsieur de Varenne, you're molting. Uh, would you try Well... What have we here? Trick or treat? Oh, I am uh, at your service, monsieur. I am Monsieur Jacques de Varenne. If it's a duel, I'm sorry I'm busy right now. But I can meet you tomorrow morning behind the bowling alley. Shall we say paper clips at 50 paces? But monsieur, I have never been spoken to like that in my life. Look, Mulligan, you've got a whole week off with pay. Now, why don't you take advantage of it? The rest is doing me a world of good. Mr. Brown, I'm doing a very big job for somebody, and, well, if you see anybody that knows me, don't tell them who I am, please. Mulligan, you can rest assured that's something I'll never admit. Thank you. Pat, uh, when Charles Boyer leaves, will you type these notes up for me, please? Vive la Mulligan. Mickey, what's this important job you're doing? Oh, I'm sort of a stand-in for a very big French author, Jacques de Varenne. He wrote The Forbidden Journey. And I impersonate him every place I go, so he won't be bothered by his fans. It sounds fishy to me. Fishy? I get a hundred bucks a week and all expenses paid. It really sounds fishy to me. It's just a break for me that I look like Jacques. Well, Mickey, do me a favor. Be careful, huh? Mm. Don't you worry about me, my chérie. Uh, Jacques de Varenne. <laughs> I'll be the same. Oh, it's Jacques de Varenne. Madame. Sally, do something for me. Find out what hotel that French author Jacques de Varenne is staying at. De Varenne, V-A-R-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Oh, pepper dish. <laughs> à tout à l'heure. Merci, monsieur. Mickey, I have no time for masquerades. Where is Mr. de Varenne? Oh, but I am Monsieur de Varenne. Oh, Mickey, please. I am, Miss... Uh, I am, Miss... When I... is he coming back? 
Why, I've gone nowhere. If you only tell me what you wish, I could Mickey, help. would you please stop pretending to be a Frenchman and take off that ridiculous goatee? Oh, no! Well, then this Jacques person said that all he wants Mickey to do is impersonate him and relieve him of social obligations. It sounds awfully fishy to me. Michael didn't tell us anything about this. When I left this morning, he said he'd be back in two hours. And now, a few minutes ago, he phoned to say he wouldn't be home for dinner. Joe, do you suppose he's all right? There's something sinister about this de Varenne. I didn't like his looks. And I don't believe a word he says, either. I think we'd better go check on this. If there's any person in the world that looks exactly like Michael, this I've got to see. Come on, now. Ricky, I do not want you to leave the hotel until I return. I do not want anyone to know that I have left. N'est-ce pas? Sure, sure. Uh, oui, oui. Just uh, make yourself at home. Uh, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll probably finish reading your book. <laughs> Au revoir. Oh, uh, Mulligan, if an Amboto calls, hang up. <laughs> The true source of the mighty Amazon River is a little mountain lake lying in the heart of the Peruvian Andes. In this unexplored region, the strange tribe of the Ambotos dwells. The origin of the Amboto is unknown. Some say they are descended from the Spanish conquistadores. Others claim they are related to the ancient Incas. The Ambotos themselves say they are descended from the sun. Centuries of life in the heart of the Amazonian jungle has given the Mboto the ability to move about as quietly and stealthily as a jaguar. They can be in the same room with you and you won't even know they are there. The principal avocation of the Mboto tribesmen is hedge shrinking. <laughs> In my travels through the Amazon jungle, I had heard many tales of the Mboto men, but I didn't realize what lay in store for me upon meeting my first Mboto woman. Her name was Sama. She was lovely beyond words, exotic and graceful as a Mayan goddess. Her full lips breathed passion, and her sultry eyes burned into my very soul. In the center of her forehead, she wore a brilliant ruby. Wherever she went, an intoxicating scent of a thousand jungle flowers filled the air. <laughs> I shall never forget how Samal and I drank together the juice of the patawa fruit. As fate would have it, this was the last time I was ever to see my beloved Samal. Jesus, this author really gets carried away, doesn't he? <laughs> Get back in the book. Samal, meet husband. Samal, see. Pardon me, but what is that you've got in the middle of your forehead? Samal has this since she's 16 years old. Well, I have some salve at home. I think it'll clear it right up for you. Husband, look, child. Look, miss, I, I, I'm not your husband, you see. I'm... Samal, you're obedient slave. Ah. Eat, husband. Oh, you know. Well, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not your husband. I've never seen you before in my life. You taste patawa fruit. Hmm? Under Amboto law, you marry Samal again. What is this, a marriage license or something? Look, tell me the truth, will you please? What sorority are you being initiated into? Samal loves Jacques. Huh? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, Samal, you're never going to take Jacques, me alive. Jacques. Jacques. No, you're... You're not gonna... No, no, listen, please. Look, I just put the glasses on. Excuse me, Mr. General, but I must speak to you. Oh, but... Uh, God, it's me, Mickey Mulligan. I'm not the Varenne. My husband, remember when we do the wedding dance? Now, Mr. 
Mr. Deborah, it'll only take a moment of your time. Oh, I'm not Deborah. Please, Pat, can't you? I don't dance like that, please. It's me, Mickey Mulligan. Oh, Mickey, it is you. Of course, who did you think it was? Who is this woman? How do I know? She, she came in with a basket of fruit. Mickey, you don't have to pretend to be struggling anymore. I'm sorry I interrupted. Your mother and father are downstairs. I'll tell them you don't need any help. I do need help, Pat. Listen to me, please. Can't you leave me alone? Look at her. Pat, look at me. Ah! You are the husband of Samal? I'm the husband of nobody. Who, who are you? We are Ambotos. I am Queen Sat. I am Mixato. Well, I'm Mickey Mulligan. Look, can't you fellow just You must pay, Mr. Jacques. But I'm not Monsieur Jacques. You, you fellows got me mixed up. Look, let me prove it to you. I can... Oh, I got... I got too much stick on it here. Do not think you can fool us by changing your face, Mr. Jacques. No. We are experts at changing faces. Yes. Our profession is shrinking heads. Here is a sample of our handiwork. But what, what is it? My half-brother. Where's the other half? Ah, good likeness. Do you not think? Yes, it's, it's, it's a good likeness. Here, for you. For me? Yeah. Thank you. It will fit perfectly after a few more treatments. You more tree? Oh, look, look, fun is fun. But listen, fellas, do you... Are you fellas allowed to do this in this country? Oh, we have a very fine reputation. We have treated over 500 customers. No. Yes. Well, tell me, wouldn't you fellas... Bonsoir, Monsieur Mir... Do not leave the apartment. I shall be compelled to call the gendarmes. No. You have stolen the secrets of the Ambato, and you must pay. Pay? Yes. You must pay our share of the royalties of this book. What a savage thought. I will be glad to pay anything if you only do not shrink my head. Please. We do not shrink heads anymore. That one out with button shoes. What about your half-brother? This I carve from the coconut. We sell them to the tourists. <laughs> tourists? <laughs> well, then this was just a big act you were putting on, huh? No. We read in the newspapers that Mr. Jacques sell this book to the movies, for which we also want our royalties. This fellow talks like he was your agent or something. He is. He brought me here for an audition. I would like to <laughs> act in your picture. Well, what about the girl, Samal? Ah, she is my sister. She would like to act in the picture also. Samal! Husband! All right, Deborah, whatever your name is. I'm a police officer. This whole thing smells like a bunco, and I want the facts quick. Oh, Michael, if you're in trouble, you should have confided in us. I'm not going to jump to any conclusions, Mickey. Not until I've given you a chance to explain about that woman. Yes, how about the royalty? Oh, Come on, wait a minute. Attention, Maybe you and I, we'd better change places, huh? Look, I will... No. No, 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 somehow. Please. No, no fruit. No fruit. No, no, no. Bottles just came to tell you it's time to get up. Oh, God. We thought when you finish your book on the Amazon jungle, we'd like to have parts in your picture. Oh, I, I quit writing that one. I've got a new one now about a boy and his dog. Maybe there's a part for me in that, too. Woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> I sure made a fool of myself, didn't I? Thinking I could become a famous author overnight. You know, dear, maybe you learned a lesson from your little escapade yesterday. There are a lot of people could use a little head shrinking now and then. Mm -hmm. Always remember, never try to be someone you aren't. Yeah, you know, as a fellow once said, the only way to get ahead is to keep the one you've got. <laughs> Man, <it's cool. laughs> Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Voila. And there you have the tasty word from the good folks who will bring you the next Hey Mulligan show. Be with us then, eh? And I hope that we didn't frighten any of you out there with our little adventure tonight. Because, you know, after all, none of this could actually have ever happened. I mean, about the embodos or the red ants. It was all in good fun, and I hope that you all... <laughs> <laughs>